Someone's keeping score I've seen it all I've seen the lies False promises For compromise For every battle But still I lost the war Now I don't know Who to pray to
let your experience begin right now. From high atop the mountains of British Columbia to you listening around the world, this is Spaced Out Radio. You can follow us on our website, spacedoutradio.com, on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can follow us on Instagram, Dave Scott, S-O-R, or on our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. Buckle up, space travelers. It's time to go for a ride as we are live on Spaced Out Radio. Good evening and welcome to Space Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, and thank you so much for tuning in as we come in from the frozen Canadian tundra, battle our way past the wild animals, sidestep Bigfoot, and enter Uncle Jimbo's cabin, stoke the fire, heat this place up, and broadcast you live on this Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning if you're on the East Coast. Here at SOR, we do this thing seven days a week. Yes, we want to be your official one-stop shop when it comes to the supernatural, paranormal, conspiratorial, ufological, and so much more. Space Out Radio's theme music, we're warming up with guitar god Ron Bumblefoot Thal. You can find his new album, Little Brother is Watching, by going to spacedoutradio.com. If you're on social media, so are we. You can follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show, and of course our website is spacedoutradio.com. At this time, we love sending that shout out to our fans taking part in the Spaced Out Radio chat room, along with our listeners at Paranormal Into the Night and Paranormal Forum. If you're a fan of Spaced Out Radio, coming soon is our Space Travelers membership, where for only five bucks a month, you can win prizes, take part in our private group interviews, have a special section on our website, a monthly newsletter, and so much more. Hey, for that five bucks, we're giving you a hell of a lot more than just our archives. Tonight's show is brought to you by Rivulet Reiki and Readings, providing healings in person or at a distance. Purpleplates.com, help heal your body, mind, and soul. The New Agora newspaper, 80,000 people a month read that paper. And the Spirit Story Box, the official ghost hunting app of Spaced Out Radio. Show number two on Spreaker tonight, and I think, well, I, I probably got the kinks out for this one. As last night was a lot of fun broadcasting with no real audio issues, it's nice to actually have some compliments about that for once. A breath of fresh air it was. Tonight, our guest was going to be resident crypto historian Rob Morphy, but the flu has him down for the count tonight. He does apologize to all of our SOR listeners, but this one has him pretty beat up, so we're going to give him a free pass on this one. Nevertheless, the show must go on, as we are live, large, and in charge of what happens on Space Out Radio, and you, our great fans, want a show, so we're going to provide you one. The beauty of live radio is there's always something to talk about, and, well, we haven't talked about conspiracy theories in a while, so tonight... I'm joined by the groovy bean, Yvonne Palermo. She likes it when you roll the tongue in her last name. Well, Yvonne and I are going to go head-to-head with some conspiracies out there. Some are old, some are new, and some, well, let's just say they're pretty far out there. 
Tonight is also a good chance for you, for the first time, to call in and talk to us about any topic you like, whether it's conspiracies or anything else that's boggling your mind. Maybe you want to make a compliment or a comment or a concern on the radio show. Our new phone number is one 702 302 Four five five six. That's one seven zero two three zero two four five five six. Now that is an American number, so that way you don't get charged the international calling. Or if you want to hook up with us on Skype, Spaced Out Radio Dave. Real original, I know. Spaced Out Radio Dave is the Skype line. If you want to jump on in, we bring in the groovy bean right now, who's banging away at her keyboard. How are you there, Ivan? <laughs> hey, thank you for having me on with you tonight, Dave Scott. Not thank a problem. You. I want to introduce everybody to the groovy bean, Yvonne Palermo. <laughs> the reason <laughs> why job. is because when we go to three hours, and we're going to talk more about this on the SOR Roundtable coming up this Friday night, but when we go to three hours, Yvonne's going to be giving me a big help. And she is an awesome broadcaster. She is very knowledgeable. She's smart. She went through a rigorous, rigorous, death-defying interview process to get the position to help me out on the main show Monday through Friday. As of April 18th, you will hear Yvonne with us a lot more. We'll get into more details on the SOR Roundtable this Friday night as I will be joined by James Tyson as well as the Cosmic Passport's Elizabeth Anglin and the Groovy Bean. Just call her Ivan. Crazy Ivan. She likes that. <laughs> Yvonne, thank you so yes. much for hopping on in tonight. How are you doing? You bet. No problem. I'm doing wonderful. I am excited to be here at Spaced Out Radio. And thank you out there to all the listeners that are tuning in right now and being so welcoming in the chat. Well, you know what? We do, do actually try and take part with our listeners in the Spaced Out Radio chat room along with Paranormal End of the Night and Paranormal Forum, our two main chat sites. There will be no more because it'll be just too damn hard to follow. But it, you know what? The one thing that you will learn about our audience, Yvonne, as you jump two feet into the big Spaced Out Radio puddle, our audience, and I make no bones about this, I have said this many, many times, our audience is probably one of the smartest out there that we have. I've been to a lot of shows. I've been in a lot of chat rooms. I've seen the way people act. But the one thing that I have noticed about the people who take part in this Space Out Radio chat room, along with Paranormal End of the Night and Paranormal Forum, is the fact that they are very brilliant. They ask very pointed questions, and they're not dumb questions. They're not silly questions. They know the way this show is run. They know the way that this show is performing. They know what we expect from them, and in turn, we get it back. So it's very interesting, and you're going to be hit pretty hardcore in that when it comes down to it, and you should be excited about it. Absolutely. Thank you for um, bringing me on in. I feel I feel warmed up and ready to go. <laughs> me too. Me too. Now, apparently, we are having, I don't know yes. if, ever, if everybody can hear us, because apparently there's a lot of comments saying that nobody can hear us. Mm. And yet, I do know that we are live. We are live, and I am checking on the chat, and we got a yes on the live chat at Spreaker.com. Yeah. Try the link again. It is www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash space dash radio dot com. Or not dot com. We don't need that one. I'm just curious why we all of a sudden have no audio. Everybody mm -hmm. is saying we have no audio. Joey is hearing us just fine. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm going to try to put some links in there for you folks. And if they can't hear, i tell you what, we got to fix this. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what is going on. I wonder <laughs> what is going on here. 
I wonder what is going on. And you know what? We have Oops. hopefully people being able to hear us. Okay, Kathy is saying that we are in and out. So okay. I wonder what it is. I wonder if I am sitting here wondering what is going on. Wondering on Ghost Dave. Now nope. we're back. There is, are we back now? Can everybody hear us? We're good. Breaker one niner. You know what? We almost got into serious trucker talk there. Serious trucker talk. <laughs> All right. So I do want to explain a little bit here. Rob Morphy, who is our crypto historian, is was supposed to be our guest tonight. However, he got hit with that nasty flu that is going down around um Around, you know what, I've had it. You guys heard me a couple of weeks ago. I sounded like a wounded seal. And a lot of people have had it. You're battling bronchitis right now. And you know what, Rob was just so deathly ill. He sent a note and said that uh, he could not make it tonight. And you know what? He feels really bad because this is two times, two times, in a row that he hasn't been able to make it. Our last show that we tried to get him on the air, we had technical problems, with, which was typical with our previous server. Loathe their name. We will not discuss them anymore. And now he's ill. So we must have a show that goes on. So tonight, what we are going to do is we're going to take your calls, one seven zero two. 302 4556 or Skype me at Dave's or what is my Skype? Spaced Out Radio Dave. And we are going to be getting into some conspiracy theories tonight. I'm curious because Yvonne, for people who don't know her, she is quite tapped into the conspiracy side. And, you know, shh, don't tell anybody, Yvonne. Okay. This is my secret. Nice okay. But she <laughs> she has got to meet and deal and talk with some pretty heavy people behind the scenes about what is truly going on. So I want to get into some conspiracies. I quickly called up the phone, said, Ivan, I need you on the air tonight. <laughs> Rob Morphy's down for the count. Like King Kong Bundy, not just a three count. He went for a full five count. And... We're going to do a show, and she, like, hopped right on. So, conspiracies. If you have a question, this is the way it works. If you have a question, if you're in one of the chat rooms, then what I would suggest is you type your question in on capital letters, so that way we can get to it. If there's something you want to hear from us, that's the way we will work it. I hope these technical problems really don't continue. You know, because there's nothing more that kind of pisses me off than the technical problems that we you sometimes know, there's have. A, there's a saying. We roll with it. Mm -hmm. We got this. We got this. Mm hmm. All right. So, let us see what's going on here. What do you want to talk about? What's the first conspiracy? Since you're the new newbie to this group, I am going to give you the first topic of discussion between you and me and our valued listeners tonight. So you fire away. Oh, my. Ooh, how tempting. Oh, such a smorgasbord to choose from. How about we talk about a little-known satellite called the Black Knight. Ooh, good one. The Black, yes. The Black Knight satellite, it is in a polar orbit. Did you know this? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. What did you find out about the Black Knight satellite? Tell me what your sources are telling us. Well, I was um, doing some research on Nikola Tesla, and um, in, he, he discovered, or well, this is what, we, what I found out. In 1899, in May of 1899, 
he uh, was uh, fiddling around in his laboratory in Colorado and uh, working with his radio frequencies. And he did, he received a radio frequency message from what is known now as the Black Knight. Apparently it's 13,000 years old, uh, I believe. And I'm not sure where the measurement came from, but 15, 15 tons it weighs. Um, we're not sure what exactly the Black Knight decoded message was to Nikola Tesla. But um, interestingly enough, that same year is when the uh, World's Fair in New York happened not too long ago. Interesting little meeting up in the Eiffel Tower, which I don't think was a tower either. But anyhow, the Black Knight uh, brings in a lot of theories. And of course, uh, NASA does not like to NASA says it's a bunch of tinfoil flying on up in there, <laughs> which I don't agree with, because how would Nikola Tesla, Tesla uh, how, how did he know this? What, what messages did he receive? Not only that, uh, I don't know if you all are aware, but uh, the last year Pepsi uh, came out and did a 10 minute uh, beautiful kind of <laughs> expensive documentary on the Black Knight. And at the end of this uh, documentary, uh, the, the, the satellite was represented as the Eye of Horus. A lot to soak in there. Well, <laughs> well you know what? If we want to go really off the rocker here, I don't know how true this is. And that's the beauty part of conspiracy theories, is they're conspiracy theories for a reason. I actually heard someone who used to work for NASA who helped develop their computer programs and help run the space shuttle program when it was around. <coughs> and my source told me that when Columbia, Space Shuttle Columbia, blew up, they said it blew up during entering Earth's orbit again. This person, who I have to protect my source, mm -hmm. said, nope, didn't happen that way. Oh. And what they were saying was that Columbia and its crew was on a secret mission to actually try and use the Canada arm to grab a hold of the Black Knight satellite. However... E.T. and friends up in the sky apparently didn't like that, so they fired a warning shot, and it hit. So one thing that we do know about NASA is they don't tell us everything we need to know. We know they are blocking out pictures. We know they're editing pictures. We know they're editing film. How many pieces of film have we seen that have ufos on it and then or images on the moon from buildings or mars or wherever it is and by the time they release it to the public there's nothing there so as far-fetched as i believe this conspiracy theory is for my mind personally to handle what if that was what truly happened uh -huh. Mind blowing. That's what I'm soaking this in. That's 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 yeah. heavy. That's heavy for a mm -hmm. second. And the mm -hmm. one thing you will learn, Yvonne, as you continue on spaced out radio, dead air doesn't work. Doesn't work. Exactly. Yes, sir. We're, we we are training. <laughs> that would be Sergeant Major. I don't know. I don't know. But think about that. And, and I'm curious to see what our audience says in the Spaced Out Radio chat room, whether you're on Paranormal Forum or Paranormal Into the Night. I'm curious to see what you guys think in regards to that. Because and I am still questioning whether or not that one is there. And I agree with you, Yvonne. That Black Knight satellite is something there. Mm -hmm. I believe it is alien. But for all we know, it could be just a piece of space rock. We don't know. 
And unfortunately, it is way below our security and pay grade to actually know what it's about. But I'm curious to see what our Space Out Radio listeners have to say about that. Now, I have Exogenesis coming in on Twitter saying, Hey, Dave, I heard they were bringing back a secret space program soldier. That could be, too, when something happened. So... What else do you got on the Black Knight? Because this is an interesting topic. This one intrigues me, man. All right. Well, what if the Black Knight... Okay, so speculation on what exactly is the Black Knight. If it is 13,000 years old, what is it? Who's in it? The, the whole purpose of it. So for the Black Knight, let's turn it around and think about inner Earth. What a genius way to start keeping an eye on all of us up here for inner Earth would be the black knight Mm -hmm. what if it's it's the anunnaki's keeping an eye on what's going on what if it's a portal what if tesla uh, figured out with all of his radio frequencies and lightning work since he was the master of lightning what if he found a portal in colorado and he and he teleported up there how about that Oh, now you're on serious Colorado marijuana thinking that. (laughs) Serious Colorado marijuana thinking that. I really don't know. I think that's, a to be serious, that's an interesting theory because, let's face it, people like Nikola Tesla and people like, like Albert Einstein, they were very, very smart people, way too smart for their time. And if they were sent here to help mankind, boy, did they sure get the short toothpick in the draw you know what i'm saying oh absolutely right but and but then but then tesla so okay so then going through some records tesla wasn't the only one who was researching the radio frequencies also marconi and there there is some claims that marconi intercepted the same signals but of course um now after tesla tesla's discovery of the radio frequencies, um, you know, his laboratory did burn up and all those records were gone. That, so, you know, all, all of these um, things happening within that year time frame makes you kind of wonder, did he? Did he find it? Did he portal up there? I just, I've got, I've got the feeling he did. All right. Thinking. I'm moving on because I want to stay with the space theme because I am a huge fan of time travel. I am a huge fan of the secret space program. I think we have been to other places in this universe. I believe we have alien technology. I believe we have a colony on Mars as well as on the moon to stay local, so to speak. Do you believe stories like Randy Kramer who says he spent 17 of his 20 years on Mars while in the United States Marine Corps or do you believe a gentleman who is running for president as an independent Andrew Bashago who says he was a child chrononaut and actually went to Mars and used jump rooms with Barack Obama your president when he was still known as Barry Sotaro I, you know, uh, with Randy Kramer, I, you know, I do believe, I, I do believe, um, I, do, I don't know enough about Bashago. Is that how you said it? Bashago. Uh, Bashago. Uh, that story I don't know enough about. However, with Randy Kramer and um, a couple other names, um, it's, it's. I, I just, there's just so, so much information and watching him and his, his mannerisms and the details. Um, I, I, I feel, and I believe that it is true. Yes. I had Randy on this show and our show, when we were on the BTR days and our show got hacked in and oh. out of the 14 interviews that Randy had done at that time, six of them had been hacked. Mine being one of them. And and one of the things he said to me off the record before we actually, you know, we chatted for about an hour after the show went off the air. 
And one of the things that he said, you know, like I just let him speak. It was like I asked him one question. And the stories that he has to tell in regards to everything that he has been able to remember through his own remembrance and through past, you know, you know, going through regressive therapy and things like that. It is scary, man. Like this is right out of left field and you got a choice. It's like a coin flip. You have a choice whether to choose heads or tails on whether or not to believe them. Uh And I believe him. I really do. I believe that he spent 17 years on Mars. The ETs that he was talking about. We both know Max Steele. Max Steele spent time on Mars. He has been on this show. Absolutely. You know, and when you have these people who are coming out, the easy way to discredit them is to say, we don't believe them. Why don't we believe them? Because no one else has that experience. And who's going to believe a nut bar who says he spent 17 of 20 years on Mars? You're not going to believe that. You have no choice but to disagree with that. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. I hear you loud and clear. Exactly. So... We're going to continue on with the conspiracy theme tonight. If you want to join us online, one seven zero two three zero two four five five six. I'm going to hop out for our first break of the night with Yvonne Palermo. She likes it when you <laughs> roll the R. Yvonne, I'm going to make you silent for a few minutes because I have that power. You're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We're hopping out for the break right now. Would you like to become one of our space travelers? All you have to do is click on the space travelers icon at spacedoutradio.com. For only $5 a month, you can get access to some great prizes, as well as private monthly shows, newsletters, and a members only section on our website. Become a space traveler today. Hi there. This is your medium, Joanna, from Spaced Out Weekend, Two Mediums and a Large. I would love it if you would come and join us with host James Tyson every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. Together, we will take your calls and your questions live. Our goal is to provide you with a positive outlook on deep questions that you may have. Questions regarding love, relationships, money, or whatever else is on your mind. Come and check us out at spacedoutradio.com. Every Saturday and Sunday night, as Dave Scott wanders aimlessly in the wilderness, you can come hang out with me, James Tyson, and Spaced Out Weekend. Starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, I'll take you along as we talk with some of the best experts in their fields. Spacedoutradio.com is the place to find us. So sit down, relax, put your feet up, enjoy the topics like the paranormal, supernatural, intuitiveness, and so much more. Hope to see you there. Hi there, this is Elizabeth Anglin, and on the last Monday of every month, I join Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's Cosmic Passport. We delve into everything from extraterrestrial contact to animal communication. It's a lot of fun, and every month it's something different and exciting. I would love it if you would join us. You can hear and learn from my experiences, and I'd like to know about yours as well. Cosmic Passport on spacedoutradio.com. Hey everybody, this is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm here to bring you the Webster Phenomena every Saturday night. Live at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. If you're looking for aliens and extraterrestrials, well, we've got them. Big and tall, short and small. You're bound to find what you're looking for. So join me on the Webster Phenomena right here on Spaced Out Radio. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. Have you ever wondered about those weird and strange creatures people have reported throughout history? Do you wonder if those stories are real? Me too, and that's why I started Cryptopia.us. Hey, this is Rob Morphy, Crypto Historian. Join me once a month on Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott, where we will get into the odd and bizarre reports. 
from the Dover Demon to Harry Hominids and everything in between. I will break down what people like you and me are seeing at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to advertise on Spaced Out Radio? Getting your message out to Spaced Out Radio's listeners will benefit you. Our listeners are loyal, intelligent, and supportive. And they support those who support the broadcast. For pricing and information, you could go to spacedoutradio.com to find the pricing guide that suits your needs, with many options to choose from. Advertise with Spaced Out Radio today by contacting us at info at spacedoutradio.com. Want to connect with us online? Find us on Facebook, Spaced Out Radio Show, on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, on Instagram, Dave Scott, S-O-R, on YouTube, Spaced Out Radio Show, and our website is spacedoutradio.com. All right, space travelers, here comes the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio. What's going on, space travelers? How we all doing tonight? Dave Scott in here in the hot seat of Spaced Out Radio Land, live, always, seven days a week. My show, Monday through Friday. Uncle Jimbo James Tyson in for the weekend. Tomorrow night on the show, Vic Cundiff will join us. We are going to have two hours of intriguing, intelligent chat on the dog man. Yeah, we're going dog man for two hours. I absolutely love this topic because I'm not sure yet if I fully believe in it. I want to. I think that it's an interesting topic. I think there's something out there. There's been enough sightings. We've had Linda Godfrey on the show a number of times. But Dogman, the topic, tomorrow night, Vic Cundiff is our guest. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Space Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our private Space Out Radio group. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R. Our YouTube channel is Spaced Out Radio Show. That's where our archives go. And our website is spacedoutradio.com. So, tonight we were supposed to be talking with Rob Morphy, but he's a little too ill, under the weather, just can't make it. So, we're talking conspiracies. I got the groovy bean in here. Yvonne Palermo. Hey, hey. And we're talking conspiracies. If you want to call into the show, one 203 5344 is the call-in number. one 203 5344 And I want to say thank you to everyone before we bring you back on, Yvonne, because there's a lot of people out there who've been spreading the word that we are now moving servers, or we have moved servers, and they're spreading the word in regards to what we are doing on Space Out Radio. And I want to give a whole hearty heartfelt thank you to all of you for doing that i know there is probably still some listeners from the other station that we are on who are wondering where we disappeared to why we aren't here but i really need you guys to let everybody know so if you were in the spaced out radio chat room when we were on blog talk radio make sure you let people know if you're visiting other shows there where we went Tell them to give us a follow right here on Spreaker because the message will pop up when we are live and you can join us and they can join us as well. We're trying to keep that stable audience going. So I would appreciate if all of you can do that. Tonight we are talking conspiracies. Yvonne Palermo joins me. You're going to be hearing more of her. She will be on with James Tyson, myself, and Elizabeth Anglin on Friday night for the SOR Paranormal Roundtable, where we're going to let all of you in on the future of Space Out Radio, what we're going to be doing, what our plans are. And Yvonne joins me tonight. Thank you thank so you much. Yeah, well, thank you for having me, Dave. Appreciate it. All right. I want to get to a conspiracy that is very interesting to me. People who know and listen to this show often know that I am a really, really big fan of Bigfoot. In 2013, I had a premonition, because I'm kind of intuitive that way, that I was going to see Bigfoot. And I thought it was going to happen in June. The problem is, it didn't happen in June. But, three months later, mid-September, I was at a friend's house. They had some acreage. And in behind their property was a forest. 
And we were walking back there because when he was a kid, he had a paranormal experience back there, and he wanted to show me where it had happened. And as we're walking along this animal trail, we come across this tree that is snapped at eight feet tall. Just snapped. And it was fresh, like the bark that was peeling off of it was still connected to the piece that had fallen. And the piece that had fallen was probably 18, 19, 20 feet tall, if not taller. And it was so fresh that the bark wasn't even dry. You could still see the wet marks from where the bark had peeled off the tree. So as we were looking around, we started having that feeling. You know when you feel that something is watching you? That's the feeling we had. We started looking around, and we looked due north of us. And then about 100 feet away, there was this tree that was casting off a big shadow. Now, this is in the mid-afternoon, sunshine, not a cloud in the sky. Okay? The sun coming through the trees. Now, you got to realize, here in B.C., we got some pretty big trees all over the place. We have pretty big trees. And from the shadow of this tree, we saw something looking at us. Our first Mm -hmm. reaction was bear. Our second reaction was human. But this is a private area. Like, it's no hiking trails in there. There's no walking trails. You just never see people back there. It's almost like having a green belt type area that's private. Anyhow, it started peering out. And we saw the right side of its face and the right shoulder. Then it peered, it like, hid away. And then it peered out its head again and started peering back, behind the, hiding back behind the tree. And this continued on. And then I remembered, because I read a lot of Bigfoot stories, that Bigfoot has a habit of peering around trees and trying to remain secretive. And I said to my friend, I think that's a Bigfoot. And he goes, yeah. We were close enough where we could make out the face, but, like, we weren't close enough to see, you know, truly the full body or whatever. We saw the shoulder. We saw the right arm. We saw the face when the face came out from the tree. And after about five minutes of this, you know, we're very spiritual people. We waved at it. We said, thank you. We're going to leave you alone, and we're going to go back down the trail. So my friend turns back. I start to turn back. Now, if this Sasquatch behind the tree 100 feet away is at noon on your clock or midnight on the clock, focus your attention to about 1.30. At about 85 feet away, I see this branch shaking vigorously. And that's where I see the second one. And from the waist up, Full torso, full head. I got a whole right side profile of this massive, hairy being. Uh, It was one of the most beautiful things next to my children being born that I have ever seen, to be honest with you. So ever since then, I've kind of had a real keen love of Bigfoot. And as I started this show, I started doing a lot of research into Bigfoot and having guests come on. And one of the stories that I found online, and this is where it gets a little bit conspiratorial, was the fact that in 1999, there was a forest fire in northern Nevada. And believe me, being Canadian and loving Las Vegas, where all you see is desert, I never knew there were trees in Nevada. (laughs) You know, I'll I'll, I'll say that. (laughs) I'm sorry, that's good. But, you know, I thought it was just casinos and desert and military operations. Honestly, you know, I know I'm naive about that. But there was this forest fire in 1999 in Nevada. And the forest firefighters, they got their hoses out, they're digging trenches, and they're trying to keep this fire out when all of a sudden they see this human-like figure come out of the fire. Mm. And it was smoking, it was singeing, it was burning. And it comes out of the fire, looks around, and then sits on the ground. Rescue workers run up to this creature, and they realize that it's not a human, but a Bigfoot. And the Bigfoot, almost like it's almost dead, you know, like when you get an animal coming out of a forest fire or something along that is traumatic, it'll just lay there. It needs help. 
And at that point, it's not running for life. It's not running out of fear because a human saw us or anything like that. You know, it's like, okay, you got me. Do what you need to do with me. And they started fixing up this Bigfoot. Next thing that happened was an unmarked cube van pulled up. They picked up the Bigfoot and they helped either walk it or carry it, I'm not too sure, into the unmarked cube van. And the cube van drove away with this Bigfoot. But here's where it gets strange. After the Bigfoot left, government officials showed up and told these firefighters they saw nothing, do not say anything, or we will make your life very, very bad. So my question to you is, and to anybody out there, why do you think the government would try to cover up Bigfoot? My goodness, the magical question. And that is an amazing story. And I do want to say, uh, Dave, that you are very, very lucky to have your experience in your neck of the woods, by the way. Um I would have to, why, why would they, because they don't, they don't want us, they, well, they don't want anybody helping them, finding them out, reporting this. They want to, they want to clean up the, the reality that Bigfoot exists. Right? I know in British Columbia here, we are the only province in Canada that actually has a law where it is illegal to shoot a Bigfoot. Oh, wow. Why? I don't know. If this creature is not supposed to exist, what do you need right. a law for it? But in comes all these different theories. There are the theories that it is a government connection, that maybe it is connected to aliens that maybe the government knows more about Bigfoot than we do and is maybe capturing them for some sort of testing. Mm -hmm. You know, hence super soldiers, things like that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the fact that Bigfoot isn't a creature at all, but an interdimensional being. Much like what Ronald Murphy, the crypto guru, has said many times on this show that he believes that Bigfoot, although very large in stature, is actually a member of the fairy family. Oh. So there are many theories that could come out in regards to this. Right. I, I have, I have, I'm going to throw something out at you. Sure. What, what if also with Bigfoot, because we have uh, numerous sightings everywhere, what if the government doesn't want Bigfoot officially uh, found and claimed that, yes, yes, Bigfoot is real, because they would all, you know how we have the federal parks, the state reserves, because the government would lose all of this land. Because, you know, I, does that make sense? Because we would have to, we need to protect their land. Well, I don't know how it is down there, but I know up here we have so much parkland and federal reserve land that cannot be touched that I don't see that being a problem up here. Right. But, but here, yeah, that would be a problem because so this, I, I believe you stated that this happened in Nevada, correct? Yes. Okay. So then parts of Nevada would have to be, there would have to be reserves set for the Bigfoot. Therefore, the government and whoever else would lose the rights to this land. Just, just throwing it out there. I just had that thought. You know what? That that is a good uh, a good idea. That is a good thought in regards to it. You know, and I know I'm fortunate to have my Bigfoot sighting, and I know that there are a lot of people out there who have seen this great creature, and that's what it was. It was magnificent. You know, do I have a question with you? We we have a little. May I bring in a chat question? Somebody's talking about the Sasquatch with the fairies having little, little, little uh, issues connecting the two. How would they be connected to the fairy realm? Are you, you know, talking about the dimensional portals, possibly? Or I do believe their powers. 
I do believe that that is what it actually is. And this question comes from Nisa and Paranormal Into the Night. Ron Murphy, we'll ask him that next time he is on, on April 13th. So, Nisa, you remind me of that. But Ron believes that because Bigfoot has the ability to use portals, much like fairies do, that in one way or another he believes that they are interconnected. Ron believes that, much like I do, and much like a lot of First Nations people do across North America, believing that Bigfoot is both interdimensional and a shapeshifter. A lot of fairies, trolls, gremlins, goblins in the um, in the fairy realm are you know, considered fey. Oh. And they're considered shapeshifters. They're considered portal travelers and interdimensional beings. And Ron believes that Bigfoot is in there as well. I, 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 I like the thought that they're interdimensional beings. And I would also like to know where those portals are. <laughs> So we can uh, sit and wait. <laughs> well, you know what? I know where I live there are a lot of these fairy portals. My daughter actually almost on a nightly basis will have fairies in her room. Now, when we when we lived at our old home back in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, we never had fairies there. We move up north into the sticks and all of a sudden there's fairies in her room lighting up her room at night. She says it's actually quite beautiful. So I believe that. Yeah, I would believe that too. Your children your children can see way more than we can. Any any child can, correct? That's what I believe. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. All right, next conspiracy, I'm gonna let you choose the topic. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Yes, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go with the chemtrail spraying operations bam i i i see them every day i see them crisscrossing here in washington state and i'm tired of it uh, i started doing some research on this i actually found a old film it's from the 1950s on a navy ship and they were discussing uh uh and geoengineering and and spraying uh, chemicals on the land to change the atmosphere, which I was shocked. Well, not, I shouldn't say shocked. I was just like, there you go. There's your confirmation. Okay, bam. Now, how is it, there, there's so many, there's so many um, particles being sprayed upon us and so many lines in the sky. How is it that other people that are not awake are not seeing these. Help me out here. How are people? These are not clouds. These are not normal formations. In the aftermath, I've been timing these. The every time they spray up in the sky, I've timed it. It's about an hour and a half after we get this crazy kind of weather rain, but we're having not clouds, but but an overlay of white muck. It's like it, it's a blanketed white out blinding white out muck mm -hmm. and i'm over it mm -hmm. you know what i actually believe that a lot of people out there with the chemtrails they're so convinced that they are contrails mm -hmm. but contrails disappear they don't spread out and that's to me is the easiest one. How come when we looked up in the sky twenty years ago, when we saw contrails? Because I always had my eyes in the sky ever since I was a kid. I loved airplanes, and I loved jets, whether they were military or airliners. And for me, going to pick up family at the airport was just the same as taking a kid to Disneyland. I absolutely loved contrails. 
or not contrails, but aircraft. And when we saw the contrails, you know, they would be in short lines. Right. They wouldn't be one long continuous line. Right. And now it, we see them spreading out. You know, and I, I was out the other day and um, I was leaving the store and there was a little girl and she was pointing up to the sky to her mother and she said, Mom, Mom, look, there's ribbons in the sky. And it just stopped me in my tracks. It just stopped me in my tracks. And I, I look up and there's just, and I hope you all, all the listeners, were just, you know, if you haven't seen a chemtrail, picture ribbons, just ribbons upon ribbons of white, mucky fluff that those are not clouds. And here this little girl, and I, I waited for the mom to respond. And, and sadly, she didn't. She just tugged on her arm, come on, come on. And I thought, my gosh, you know, what this little girl is noti- noticing this. Isn't mm-hmm. that isn't that just a travesty? How can we change this to a positive? We've got to get the word out there and we got to we have to say, hey, we're we're tired of breathing in all these titanium dioxide, sil- silicon carbides, <laughs> you right? Silica, zinc oxide, the sulfates. It, it's why are they spraying this, right? So that leads into that question, why are we being sprayed? What is your answer to that, Dave Scott? Well, you know what? We have a lot of people who listen to this show who have suffered from Morgellons disease. And there Uh is a big turnout out there trying to put two and two together, and they are finding the answer of four. When it comes to people who are in major metropolises or areas that get sprayed down a lot who are coming down with Morgellons. Now, the funny part about Morgellons, if you don't know too much about it, it is a disease where it almost feels like there are bugs crawling under your skin. And some people have actually found weird-looking fiber optic type fibers coming out of their skin. They look like hair, but when you examine them closer, they're actually like fiber optic cables. Tiny, tiny ones. Tiny, tiny. And they're itchy all the time. And doctors in the medical field who have looked into Morgellons call it a psychological disease. <sighs> something along the lines of a schizo- uh, very different form of schizophrenia or something along those lines. And it's funny because my cousin is one of the top doctors in Canada when it comes to disease specialists. And I asked him one day, and he's an honest guy. He's not going to BS me, okay? And I asked him point blank. I said, I said, cuz, what do you know about Morgellons? And uh-huh. his answer to me was, what is it? And I uh-huh. said, you don't know what it is. And he goes, no. So I actually explained it to him, and he's like, oh, my God, that's disgusting. And he goes, how do these people diagnose Morgellons? And I said, unfortunately, they need to diagnose themselves. I know I'm going off on a tangent here but because I feel sorry for people who are suffering from this. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to do another show on that very, very soon because it's a very interesting disease. But many people, including one of the leading researchers of Morgellons, a Canadian lady named Marsha Pavlis, strongly believes that it is being caused on people who are having an adverse affection to what is being sprayed out of chemtrail planes. Mm. Have you seen the uh, microscopic images of the Morgellons where there are some are stamped fibers with the triangles? I've seen and I haven't checked the backing on certain ones that have NASA stamped on them. And I'm trying to remember the other one, but they're actually, there's microscopic images with electron microscopy with those stamped labels, like they're tagged as to where they came from. No, I have not. I'm unfamiliar with that. Yeah. So kind of, you. so, so it's definitely orchestrated. And um, so, yeah, you, I wonder how they navigate then or how they're measuring um what what the popul what amount of populace is 
not being affected by the chemtrails and how they have to disperse the Morgellons. What's I'm wondering what that what that entails. You know what? I really don't know why the government is doing it. I'm sure it has something to do with HARP. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that <coughs> they are able to keep people sick, which in turn benefits big pharma. I think it open up opens up a whole lot of doors. Absolutely. And it it's disgusting. And have you ever seen that video on YouTube where they actually show the plane landing somewhere in the U.S. airport where it did not turn off its sprayers? Yes. Holy amazeballs. Whoever caught that on tape. Boy. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and just plumes. It was it did not go up and there's just plumes of poisonous gas all over the, the run the runway, correct? Mm-hmm. And then did you have you have you witnessed, Dave, any of the black chemtrails? No, up here we only get the white ones. Okay. Okay. I yes, I haven't I have not seen those yet myself, but I've I've had a few folks uh, contact me and ask, and I have—I was just curious. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Let's move on. Let's get to another one. Actually, you know what? Let's hop out for a break here at the top of the hour because we are close to a break. We are within—I'm going to say just a couple of minutes here. So, Yvonne, you hold on tight. We are going to go to our break at the top of the hour here. You are listening to Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We're talking conspiracies because, well, that's just what we're talking about tonight. I hope you're enjoying the show. We haven't had a caller yet. 702-302-4556. We'll take your calls right after this break. Become more intimate and interactive with Spaced Out Radio. Join our Space Travelers Club with your new membership. For $5 a month, we'll provide you with special access to the website, monthly prize draws from books to psychic readings, along with monthly newsletter, private interviews, and more. Sign up today to be part of Spaced Out Radio's experience. Every month on Spaced Out Radio, we look into the deep and dark reports of cryptids roaming around the world with me, Rob Morphy, from Cryptopia.us. I would love it if you would join me and host Dave Scott as we delve into the most arcane stories and reports regarding creatures of the unknown. My job is to hunt down the details and bring the evidence forward to you. These aren't your regular Bigfoot stories I'm talking about either. You can find out more about crypto history at spacedoutradio.com. With an ever-expanding listenership base, Spaced Out Radio is the perfect place for you to advertise your product. Our listeners support those who sponsor this show. So whether you're an author or a company, Spaced Out Radio is the perfect place for you. Our pricing is more than competitive and your advertisements will be seen and heard every show. Head to spacedoutradio.com and advertise with us today. Contact us at info at spacedoutradio.com today. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Strange creatures lurking in the night, the sounds of wood knocking in the forest, odd happenings right out of a fictional world. These are the reports I love. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy, and I would love it if you join me and Spaced Out Radio host Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month on our journey into the unknown land of cryptozoology at spacedoutradio.com. From Mothman to Frogman and everything in between, hey, they don't call me the crypto guru for nothing. Is the 24-hour world starting to wear you down? Let me, from Rivulet Reiki and Ratings, lend you a hand. Hi, this is Jolene, and if you're in need of Reiki or a realm reading, come to my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr, and let us help you out. At Rivulet, I specialize in healing your body, mind, and soul, no matter where you are. 
And be sure to check out the Rivulet R&R Facebook page for your best deals. Remember, it's time for you to make some time for you. Find yourself constantly looking up in the sky, looking for answers? Have you had extraterrestrial contact? Are you an abductee? Looking for answers to your experiences? Hi there, I'm R. Keith Andrews, Spaced Out Radio's resident ET expert. Join me live the first Friday of every month where I take questions from the Spaced Out Radio chat room and help you understand those from the far off world. It's two hours of knowledge every experiencer should listen to. Hope to see you there. Did you know that Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi, it's James Tyson from Spaced Out Weekend. Every Saturday and Sunday night, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, you can join me and my guests for some great chatter about what's going on out in the universe or even in that dark part of the basement you really don't want to go back into. Well, let's find the answers to your experiences together. So come on up to Uncle Jimbo's cabin on the weekend. For more information, look us up at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to connect with us on Spaced Out Radio? Head to spacedoutradio.com to check out the latest shows, guests, and sponsors. And don't forget to sign up for the Space Travelers Club. You'll find all you need at spacedoutradio.com. And welcome back to Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for being with us. Tomorrow night on the show, we're getting into the crypto world. We're going to be talking Dogman. Vic Cundiff will join us. He is a Dogman expert. He investigates it. He even has his own radio show about the Dogman. We are going to be able to chat with him tomorrow night about this mysterious creature that shares the woods with Bigfoot. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Space Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our private Space Out Radio group as well as Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R, and our YouTube channel where our archives go is Space Out Radio Show as well. Our website, spaceoutradio.com. If you want to check that out, see what's happening. We are growing that, and we are going to be having a very, very good time with that. So we bring in Groovy Bean, Yvonne Palermo tonight on Space Out Radio. Thank you so much for coming back. How are you? Hey, thank you for having me, Dave, and hello, listeners. So we're talking conspiracies tonight. And one of the conspiracies that I find very, very interesting is the fact that people around the Internet and on social media the past couple of months have been going very hard on the flat earth theory. What is your take on flat earth? Are we round or are we just one big disc sitting in the middle of the universe? Hello. What do you think? Oh, there you are. Hello. Sorry about that. Hey. Uh, well, I think that. What? What if it? What if it could be both? I'm. I'm going on. I'm going out. I'm going out on the edge of the flat Earth <laughs> with that one. I. I. Oh gosh, with the flat Earth. You know, here's the thing with the flat Earth. Okay. There's. There's a lot of good points with the flat Earth theory. So mathematically, you know, um, visually, graphically, how they do this. But I just, um, okay, so I have to explain because from me leaving my third dimensional body and astral traveling, I have been up in space. So I believe that we are on a sphere. I, I, I don't believe the flat earthers. I'm sorry. I don't. I'm not buying it either. I really am not. I believe that, you know, some of the theories that I've heard is we have never been to space. NASA really doesn't exist. It's a black ops program. We have no ISIS or ISS, International Space Station, up in the sky. 
that if a plane was flying, it would continually have to be going up because if it continued on its straight course axis, that eventually it would hit the ground. I've heard them all. Mm -hmm. I'm just not buying it. When you have astronauts out there, and these are pretty smart characters out there who have been up in space and have went around the Earth, went onto the moon, walked on the moon, and I do not believe for a second that we did not walk on the moon. I strongly believe that they have been able to process information and get information that is proper. And let's face it, we're going back five, six hundred years now when they figured out that the world was round and not flat. I just have never, ever bought into the flat earth theory. But like you said, the people who are coming out with the information, uh -huh. you know, they're not just saying the earth is flat, that's that. They're actually trying to provide some pretty serious arguments to the fact. And they're getting a lot of traction. Right. And, but you have to, so with all, okay, so with all the details that the flat earthers go in with the videos, the documentaries, and, and they're pretty hardcore folks, and, and they're really, I don't know if you've noticed, but they're really, really good at bombarding anybody against them, and they're very good at trying to make them believe. So it leads me to believe that these are psyops. That's how I feel. How about you? I wonder if they are. I wonder yeah. if they are psyops or whether these are people who are disinformationalists or just trying to throw another theory out there. Because, let's face it, the government is so untrustworthy now that you throw any conspiracy out there, as ridiculous as it may be, including one that I have read recently that even the Titanic was a conspiracy theory because there was people on the ship that died that wanted to take down, you know, some banking issues dealing with the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds back in the day. You know, I mean, how far do we have to reach in order mm -hmm. to take a conspiracy theory seriously or not? And much like the paranormal, much like the UFO field, I think it's people who are willing to blow things out of proportion that really take away from the true science and information that is out there. Now, I don't, I don't want to get into a big 9-11 thing here because we beat the hell out of that on this program a number of times. But mm -hmm. I will say this. When you look at 9-11 or you look at JFK, there are so many holes in the official story that you know that there's something else out there. But when you get into scientific theory, when you get into space theory, when you get into theories about you know, that are going back a hundred and some years when the Titanic sank, and you're trying to say that that was a conspiracy theory, that they ran the ship aground on an iceberg on purpose, that's where we tend to really get off our rockers. And I don't like that, because it's taking away, in my opinion, and maybe some of your opinions as well, it's taking away the true information that we need to find out about what truly went on at 9-11. What truly went on with JFK? What is truly going on with aliens and disclosure? Let's get to the real topics instead of trying to disassociate ourselves from what mm -hmm. is at hand and come up with something that to me is absolutely ridiculous like the flat earth theory. Right. It's, it's and that's what makes them so brilliant at the redirection, right? Taking everybody away from what's really going on. And that's why I believe with the flat earth. But Dave, I got a question for you from Gail. Dave, if flat earth theory were true, what difference does it make? That's directed at you, my friend. Oh, Gail, always throwing the tough <laughs> questions at me. Always. And you know what? I have to say, Gail is one of the most participating audience members that we have on this show. And I appreciate everything because she's always coming up with some brilliant questions. 
Ah, pleasure to meet you, Gail. Absolutely. Realistically, I don't know what difference it would make to society. It would make really no difference on my end if it were flat or not. But I think we have enough scientific theory and scientific evidence out there to show that we have been to space, that we have had people on the International Space Station, that we have been on the moon. And I strongly believe that, you know, when we start putting disinformation out there and screwing with scientific fact then that is dangerous for a lot of people because people are not going to, as I said, take the real conspiracy theories out there very seriously. And there's another question here from Claudia in Paranormal Into the Night. What is your opinion that we are a hologram? Seems like a lot to support this fact. Oh, See, this is... This yeah. is tough questions. I would prefer to have an expert on this in regards to this because I don't think I'm a hologram. I don't think my family is a hologram. I don't think that any of this is fake. What's your opinion on that? Uh, well, I'm reading the question, and I'm taking it. What is your opinion that we are a hologram? Uh, Claudia, I'm questioning if, if you're talking about the physical body or, or are you talking about the matrix itself, if you using that terminology that we're living in the matrix. Um, I, I, oh, I believe that um, there's only so many dimensions, obviously, that we can see, um, although there are some that can see beyond that. So it's, that's, a tough, that's a tough one with a hologram. Um, I don't believe that my third three-dimensional body is a hologram. But I, I do believe um, and have felt myself and experienced that it, it has existed in different realms. So um, depending mm. on the question, if that makes sense, how you would. Yeah, I, un unfortunately, Claudia, I'm going to play dumb on this one that I really don't even know how to answer that. And that's about as honest as I can get on this. But it is a great question. And we will try and find someone, because I know Corey is listening, we will try and find someone to maybe talk about us being holograms. Mm -hmm. Okay, next topic of discussion that I have here, and this actually comes from Paranormal Into the Night, and I had it written down. False flags, but more importantly, crisis actors. You mm -hmm. ever notice that there, every time there is something happening in the world, the crying lady shows up? Absolutely. The same one over and over and over. And then the little kids that are orchestrated just right and they're running the scripts right out of their mouth as if it's, you know, the ticker tape. Doo, doo, doo. And then you see the uh, pretend father or parents uh, kind of saying the script of the child just under their breath. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's I had, pretty frightening. <laughs> I, I had on a couple of months ago James Fetzer who is a former professor emeritus of the University of Minnesota Duluth. And he does not believe, <clears throat> excuse me, that Sandy Hook took place. He does not believe the Boston bombings took place. And this is not just a gentleman who is coming up with some cockamamie theories. And when you listen to the evidence <laughs> that he has collected in regards to Sandy Hook, in regards to the Boston bombings, and then you start seeing the people. All you have to do is go on the Internet and see how the same people happen to be at these sites almost every time. Now, when it comes to the Boston bombing, there's the famous picture of the runner being hauled away in a wheelchair right. with his the bone, his fibia sticking out of his ripped and torn apart skin. Uh -huh. and he's conscious. If you lose that much leg, do you not think that there would be a blood trail? When you see that picture of that ripped skin, do you think that he would be conscious with that amount of blood loss? 
especially when you look at the tourniquet that they put on his leg, it doesn't look very tight. Right. Okay. Then you look at the fact that the gentleman who was injured looks eerily familiar to a soldier that lost both his legs in the Middle East. Right. So what's up with that? <laughs> you know, but the right. fact but the fact is when you look at the photo of him being wheeled away, you would expect at least blood droppings on the ground and there's nothing there. Yeah. I I I agree with you there um having worked in the medical field and as an EMT, uh you know, I have to agree with you on the blood part um the and oh, the tourniquet, unless there was some other tourniquet that was underlying, uh, but but as far as okay, and then with him being alert and and not knocked out, um, everybody's body responds differently to to shock and trauma. So um, and then with the adrenaline that can also um, coagulate your blood, it just depends sometimes. But um, I have seen those pictures and. My gosh, if, if it's not, if you, if you haven't, as a listener, if you haven't researched these pictures, please do so, because it's, it's shockingly um, apparent, uh, even uh, the pictures of the women laying, laying around, and I believe there's one that is holding her cell phone and not crying, not doing anything, and it, it's, it definitely uh, is a setup. And and then when you see them elsewhere, I'm over it. It's it's how, how come? But how come nobody's going to find these people? Let's get them on camera. Let's put the camera in their face and say, "Hey, were you here?" I'm kind of one of those persons. Oh, well, I <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> I I fully agree. I fully agree with that. But I mean, that all depends if the people can be found. Mm hmm. You know, right. I mean, people live, I mean, they're the type of people who can blend into a crowd. That's why they're crisis actors. Hmm. You I, know, I and, guess, I guess I feel if people are getting the pictures of them and noticing this, mm -hmm. then get in, get up to the person and say, Hey, I saw you here and just try to get a reaction out of them. That's how I feel. I, 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 does that make sense? Cause if they're getting the pictures and saying, Hey, right. I don't know. That's how I feel about it. I want more. I want to know more. Mm -hmm. I want to know more, too. And you know what? I am definitely going to be bringing the gentleman Jim Fetzer back on the radio here. I'm going to try and get him on for May or June. <laughs> We are going to take a caller right now, and this looks like Dino from Paranormal End of the Night. We're going to add him in here. Dino, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, Dave. How are you doing? And what? Groovy, what's up? Hey, pleasure to meet you. Welcome. Pleasure to meet you. Mm -hmm. Thought Let I'd me... call in Dave and see how the, the line's going. You, you picked it up really good, so I guess you can get callers, huh? I am like a pro on this right now. I am feeling <laughs> like a pro. So awesome. that that makes me happy. That yes. makes me totally happy in regards to it. So Dino, thank you so much. And and for people who don't know Dino here, I want to introduce you because I know we got a lot of new listeners checking out the show. Dino found this show back in late January, and he is with the Paranormal Into the Night group that you hear us talk so much about. And Dino fell instantly in love with this show, and I've thanked him, I think, probably about eight to ten times a day, ever, every day since then. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, he's really helped bring a lot of people the awareness of what we are doing here on Space Out Radio. And it was because of Dino's group and groups like Paranormal Forum that we really put the pressure on to tighten up this show, to clean it up, to get it over to Spreaker, so that way we could have a better sound and better communication with our audience. So what do you think so far, Dino? Uh, I think great. Um, I think you're dealing with uh, just a couple little glitches, but it's the second show. Um, but everything sounds great. Uh, the levels are awesome. Um, even the Spreaker chat's kind of cool. I think uh, way better than the blog talk was, so... People can interact a little bit better there. 
I um, appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, awesome, awesome show. It's, I mean, the sound was, I think, number one on the list with everybody. The audio and um, it's just it's coming in crisp and clear. You know, it's so it sounds awesome. Yeah. Hey, while you're on the air, I want to explain something to everybody listening in. Unlike Blog Talk Radio, where I would open up a chat room and you guys can go in there and chat before the show, during the show, and after the show until I close the room. Hmm. On Spreaker, this is one thing that I'm learning. The chat room doesn't open until I hit that we are live. So when when you hear me playing a Ron Bumblefoot Thal song before the show, I'm doing that to open up the chat room. So that way people can enter the chat room, get ready for the show. They know we're about to go live. So it's kind of like a warm-up to our introduction to the show. So thank you for hopping on. I wanted to get that out sometime tonight, and it had passed my mind until you came on. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I did notice that too. So, um yeah, definitely, and and I appreciate you throwing the the name out there and all that. Uh, you know, everybody in the group just loves the show and w- looking for something different, and you guys certainly bring that uh, to the show. So, and looking forward to to Groovy. Uh, hopefully, uh, and the name's awesome. I tell you, <laughs> um, kind of cool. Yeah, just uh, what what the, what was the word you made up there in the chat? Oh, Amaze, amaze balls. Amaze balls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Love exactly. it. Exactly. Hey, Dino. Right. Dino. You. Dino. While I got you on the air, mm-hmm. you're a guy who likes a lot of this type of stuff we're talking about tonight. What sure. is what is your main conspiracy theory that you have that's out there that you would love to know the absolute truth to? Oh God, <laughs> I think you know my uh, feeling on conspiracy theories. I mean, nine eleven's a big one, but do I really want to sit there and discuss it? Um, e- even what you just uh, brought up about the the Boston bombings and stuff like that. I mean, br- you know, the the crisis actors and stuff like that. I mean, this is all stuff that gets in your head, and you're just like, you know, what in the world can you possibly believe in this day and age that we're living in? I mean. Uh, you, you can throw anything out there, and you're going to have a great debate on both sides of the, you know, the conspiracy. And it's like, you know, we're, we're in a day and age where you don't know what to believe anymore, you know? I mean, whether it's Bigfoot, UFOs, or like you said, crisis actors, stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's something specific, uh, you know, it's, it's just all of the above. I mean, uh, I just hate that it's hard to figure out what really is happening out there you know Mm -hmm. exactly yeah and and, and like i like i said when you can have a debate on something so simple as hey a bomb went off and people are dying and this and and you don't know if it's actually something that is all made up you know and hard to even go out and prove sometimes i mean it's just you know it's the day and age we're living in and I wish uh, one day uh, a race would come down here, get us all straightened out and, you know, put us on the straight and narrow. But I don't think that day's going to come. I don't know. I I often wonder if we're just a big reality TV show for <laughs> some alien species that gets to tune in every night 24 7 much (laughs) much like the truman show was remember the jim carrey movie Mm -hmm. i wonder i wonder if they grab some popcorn and sit outside their television you know with their television you know on their projection on their wall or something much like we would do on a summer night against the wall of the house or a bed sheet or something say hey let's turn to the earth channel today and see what these idiots are up to oh (laughs) Exactly. That's what they're doing up in the Black Knight. <laughs> that that might be what the Black Knight is. That might they be. Got, they got it's the a up shame if, front seat. It's a shame if that's what they're doing. I mean, it's pretty bad punishment for something we we really shouldn't be uh, going through. But uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of kind of digs at you a little bit, you know, when you can't. Uh, get to what's really going on you know i mean it's you know i know you've had some experiences dave and um sounds like groovy has too uh i haven't really had anything so 
Um, ex- except for I called two mediums and I had a pretty good reading, which uh-huh. kind of flipped me out there. So, that, you know, I'd say that was probably the closest thing to anything really paranormal that's happened to me. But, um, yeah, man, that's why I'm so into all these shows and looking for answers. But uh-huh. you know what? The more you look for an answer, the more confusing it gets. Mm-hmm. I do want to say something. Exogenesis on Twitter at Space Out Radio made just a really good comment. He says, We should remind our audience that false flags doesn't always mean it did not happen. Sometimes people do die and get hurt. Mm -hmm. That's just part of the cover up. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, I can see that. Um, Of course. Um, You know, make a little bit of a, a story there, but blow it up into something bigger than it is, you know, just for, you know, propaganda, you know, reasons. So yeah, who knows? I mean, it's, it's just such a confusing world we live in right now. That's all. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Dino, I'm going to let you go because we're going to hop out for our final break of the night. Thank you so much for calling in. And and you know what? I want to give people such as yourself and Paranormal Into the Night and all of our listeners a Paranormal Forum a big thank you for having the, 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 the audacity, and I mean that in a good way, audacity to kick us in the ass and say, hurry up, get us some better sound because we want to listen to you. I got to tell you, these last two nights, last night and tonight since we've been on Spreaker and hearing the different sound quality and seeing what everybody is writing on social media has really been fun for me. And it's really given me this reinvigorated bolt of energy to make sure that i bring the game every night for you guys heck yeah and let's get you on some uh some stations too out there uh we need to, we need to get you in that direction too uh, in, in a little bit we'll take it slow but you know absolutely uh, reach for a- the sky man <laughs> a- absolutely my friend thank you so much for calling in tonight okay thank you dave thank all you. Right, Ruby. Hey, all right take care All right, that was Dino from Paranormal Into the Night. If you want to join his nightly Space Out Radio chat forum, just go on to Facebook. If you are a Facebook user, type in Paranormal Into the Night. The group will come up, and you can add in there, or you can go over to paranormalforum.net, and you can sign up for free in their chat room, which is a live chat on a nightly basis as well. Groovy Bean, I'm going to get you to hold on for the final time tonight. Or, or we'll start a conspiracy theory right now. Is it the final half hour of tonight's show? Because you know what? If we wanted, we could go longer. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's, there, there's a tease. There's a tease. All right. Uh, we, we're listening to Space Out Radio. We're a part of it. You're a part of it. We're having some fun tonight on Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, joined by the groovy bean, Yvonne Palermo. And this is SOR, at Space Out Radio on Twitter. Give us a like. Looking for a place to get your product to the public? Advertise with us at Spaced Out Radio. At spacedoutradio.com, you can check out our pricing and packages that best suit your budgetary needs. Whether you're a budgeted author or a company looking to expand, our listeners support the products that support spacedoutradio.com. Advertising with us is an effective way to get your message out. Contact us at info at spacedoutradio.com and get your ads out today. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. Right here, this is where we divulge the fruit of our research. Here on the Webster Phenomena every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. On Space Tower Radio. And we give it up 
to you guys, all the listeners and the live listeners. You can get something special and hang out in the chat room. And uh, we love to have you. So we'll see you every Saturday night at 8 p.m. You know where. Attention, Spaced Out Radio listeners. For only $5 a month, you can join Spaced Out Radio Space Travelers. Your membership at spacedoutradio.com will give you access to private fan area on the website, get you a monthly newsletter, draws for monthly swag, and a whole lot more. Sign up today to become a part of the Spaced Out Radio experience. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box, the iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box, the spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Strange creatures lurking in the night, the sounds of wood knocking in the forest, odd happenings right out of a fictional world. These are the reports I love. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy, and I would love it if you'd join me and Spaced Out Radio host Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month on our journey into the unknown land of cryptozoology at spacedoutradio.com. From Mothman to Frogman and everything in between, hey, they don't call me the crypto guru for nothing. The last Monday of the month on Spaced Out Radio is a night of psychic vision, mediumship, UFO and ET contact, Bigfoot stories, animal communication, and so much more with me, Elizabeth Anglin. I'd love it if you would join host Dave Scott and I on the myriad of topics we delve into. Every month, we share new views that may help you understand your own experiences. So tune on in at spacedoutradio.com and stamp your cosmic passport. Did you know that Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi, it's James Tyson from Spaced Out Weekend. Every Saturday and Sunday night, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, you can join me and my guests for some great chatter about what's going on out in the universe or even in that dark part of the basement you really don't want to go back into. Well, let's find the answers to your experiences together. So come on up to Uncle Jimbo's cabin on the weekend. For more information, look us up at spacedoutradio.com. Missed most of tonight's show? Don't worry, you didn't miss a thing. You can head to our website, spacedoutradio.com, and download our archives for free. And don't forget to get your Space Travelers membership today. Now, back to tonight's show. Welcome back. Space Out Radio. What's going on, Space Out Radio, Space Travelers? Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, joined by the groovy bean, Yvonne Palermo. Tomorrow night on the show, we will have Vic Cundiff. And we will be talking Dogman. This man is enthralled with the Dogman species. Is it real? Is it something that is just... A genuine myth. We will find out tomorrow night on Space Out Radio, 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern Time. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show. You can follow us on Instagram, Dave Scott, S-O-R. You can also check out our archives for free, as they will always, always, always be free. You will never pay for them. Space Out Radio Show on our YouTube channel is where it is at. And of course, our website is spacedoutradio.com. We bring in Yvonne Palermo for the last half hour, or is it, on Space Out Radio tonight. Yvonne, how are you? Hey, hey, I can't believe it's already the last half hour. What, what, what? This show flies <laughs> by. You know what? Our audience gets pissed off that <laughs> this show is literally the fastest two-hour show in the market. And I've said that to our guests. Our guests can't believe it. Our audience absolutely gets so mad at me that we are only on the air for two hours. But April 18th, we are going to three hours. And you know that secret. And we're going to let the cat out of the bag at the SOR Paranormal Roundtable this Friday mm-hmm. night. But I'm going to bite my tongue until then. 
Don't do it, Dave. <laughs> I'm biting it. I am biting it for sure. For yeah. sure. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. I, other than my <laughs> occasional ke- chemtrail cough. <laughs> but no, I'm having a You're blast. You're poisoned. And, and, and your, your chats are amazing. Your listeners are amazing. Very welcoming. And I, I understand why they love you. And they are dedicated to you. But Dave, that just shows how, how wonderful a job you do. So. Well, thank you. Bravo. And, and you know what? I literally, literally am very thankful for everybody who tunes in. And you know what? I can honestly say this, and I think everybody is getting me uh, or getting to understand me a little bit, a little bit more. And I know what it's like to be on the other side of the radio. I know it's what it's like to hide behind the microphone. And the one thing that I will say is this. I hope you guys understand and I hope the listeners understand that I like being interactive with our listeners. I like the fact that I can go into Paranormal Forum or Paranormal Into the Night or a Space Out Radio chat room and chat during the show with our listeners. To me, that's so important. Because I believe, and I'm not sure, but I believe that we are only one of the one of the only shows out there who is actually doing this on a continual basis. Sure, other shows have chat rooms. Sure, other shows may allow one or two questions. But I don't think a lot of other shows out there actually follow what we do and are interactive through the entire show. And my goal, as Spaced Out Radio continues to grow, is to continue that course of action. Because in the end, we're all experiencers. That's why I came up with the caption, Are You Experienced? Because we're all experiencers. And I do want to give a shout-out to someone who we don't give enough shout-out to. Kathy Hook Fisher has been with us on our team for about a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And she said when, when... She's part of the Paranormal Into the Night group. And she's like, hey, is there any way I could help out, help you guys get the word out there a little bit more? And I came up with this thing that I wanted for a long time. I said, Kathy, I am absolutely terrible at Instagram. And not only am I terrible at Instagram, <laughs> I my dream is to have live tweets during the show where you're quoting something the guest says or quoting something that I'm saying or a caller is saying. And she has totally gone above and beyond my expectations when she literally said, yeah, I'll do that. Not a problem. I can do that for you because she's very matter of fact type person. And I said, okay. And I've never had to worry about it. And she does such an amazing job with what we do in keeping the message going on social media on a nightly basis, Monday through Friday, while we do this show. You know, it's people like Kathy and people like Corey, who who is my booking coordinator and James's booking coordinator, and who really, really stand out behind the scenes. And because they may not get major play in what they do, they are such an important part of what we are doing to grow this program that it is absolutely amazing to have that type of support. And, you know, the only thing, I, the only way I can say thank you to that is by saying it publicly. I can tell them privately all I want, And, you know, some people like compliments, some people don't, or they're not comfortable with them. But if I can say it publicly, like I am to our multi-hundreds listeners, I'm going to. Because they're really the, the stars that shine behind the scene, both Kathy and Corey. And they probably will never get enough credit, but in my mind, what they do for the show absolutely helps us take giant leaps, not small steps. So I do have to mention that. 
Absolutely. And I believe as Dino just typed with his new word, amazeballs. Yes. <laughs> Bill Bill Cardwell in Paranormal Into the Night has been waiting on this question for a long time. He says, Dave, I got a question for you. A theory goes that the government has forced all electronic companies to install cameras and mics in their products, such as TVs and cell phones. Now, even refrigerators come with screens and cameras. Are we being listened to and watched? Um, I th- I think so. Yeah. I th- I think it's a way for them to be able to, if they have suspicion, like I don't think, for instance, that someone on my computer right now is staring at me. I don't believe that is happening. Maybe I'm naive. However, I think if the FBI or the CIA or one of the alphabet groups comes in and says, we have a note on this person, we need to find out what they are doing, I think for sure they're going in. Uh-huh. You, know, you know, like Edward Snowden said the other day, we're all stupid to think, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing in my own words here, but pretty much what he said is, we're all stupid to think that the FBI already doesn't know how to get information off of any iPhone in the world. Right. You know, and right. they're going to keep invading. They are. But as long as we want these new gadgets and we have to have that new phone and we have to have that refrigerator with a television screen on it, they're going to be able to get us. They're going to. Part of the reason why I don't have cable. Oh. How about you? What do you think? Absolutely. No. Um, I, in fact, while you were just talking about it, I just reached up to t- t- make sure the tape was over my camera. But um, absolutely. I, I, I think the more, I mean, you know, you see people with the Fitbits and the, but I think anything, even if it doesn't appear to have a camera on it, right, it, it's set up for access um, in, in ways we don't even know. I mean, if satellites can zoom in and see what I'm eating uh, for lunch, you know, I, I, I think uh, pretty much anything electronic um, is set up to, uh, yeah, uh, be a sneaky Pete. I think we're all loaded with sneaky Pete's in our house, and I don't like it. That's what I have to say. Well, I don't like it either. I don't like it very much. Stay away from a fridge television. What the hell do you need a television on your fridge for? <laughs> Seriously. I, I'm, really, I'm really not sure. <laughs> I, I, I don't watch TV myself, so um, I, that one I, I don't know because uh, it's, it's not reporting real news anyhow, right, or real information. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, It's all part of the plan. It's all part of the controlled system and keeping the sheeples asleep. Joe Allgaier in Paranormal Into the Night says, What if Dave is really a government computer program, artificial (laughs) intelligence? I wish I was because I wouldn't be fighting my weight all the time, Joe. I wouldn't be fighting this. (laughs) You know? (laughs) I got to laugh at that one. I am way too Canadian for that. I'm sure if I <laughs> I'm sure if I was four and a half hours south of where I am right now, that might be true. I just got to cross the 49th. But I can honestly say no, 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 Dave is real and Dave, you know, behind the scenes is, you know, just an ordinary human being. You with, are. Exactly. Fantastically magical. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, I want to get into something here. Or, you know what, it's your turn. You bring up a conspiracy here. Okay. All right, I got one for you all. Uh, You remember a date known as January 28th, 1986? (gasps) What? I do. Are the crew members of the Space Shuttle Challenger still alive? Oh, good one. Right? Good one. What do you think? You know what? I read this report about six months ago that a, a gentleman named Dr. Eowyn had put out. 
and he had some really weird information about people's names that are still the same that are working in other places and by golly their pictures look they're, oh. Aged. It, it's amazing. It's, it is. This one is blowing my mind. I want, and and here's the funny part about it is, I emailed Doctor Ewan. I don't even know how to pronounce his last name. It's E O W Y N. Google Doctor E O W Y N. I I emailed him when I read that article. I said, "Hey, I would love to have you on Space Out Radio talking about this." And he says, "Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do it." We got to pick a date, get back to me. So I email him. I said, well, what date works for you? He goes, well, I usually work best on whatever, Wednesdays or Thursdays or whatever. If not, we'll have to record. Not a problem. I go to set up the recording to do the show Uh because, you know, the odd time, I'll let you into a secret. We sometimes record. For instance, for instance, when I am in Las Vegas, (laughs) No. I I can guarantee I can guarantee you I will not be live on the night I am watching Guns N' Roses live in Las Vegas on their opening reunion tour. But I will have some really killer interviews for that week. And right. and I still want you to tune in by the way. Anyways. But he emailed me back and said, "No, I don't want to do the show." Sorry to inconvenience you. Goodbye. I mean, the the email was weird. It was absolutely weird, and huh. all this and all of a sudden, like he went from a yeah, let's do this show, like he was hungry to do it and wanted to do it, to all of a sudden, a matter of fact, no. And as we're speaking here, actually, I'm actually going to see if I still have the email, and I will read it to you. Oh, please do. Let me see if I still have it. Um, I think, well, th- this have is, you heard from him since? No. Or did it completely shut down? Just whew. This is the email that he sent to me on Saturday, May 2nd. Okay, after saying he would do the show. Uh, so put it this way. Friday, May 1st. He says to me, May 20th or 21st would be fine with me. As for a picture, if you mean a photo of me, I could supply you with only a pic of me with my face blanked out because if it were otherwise, that would defeat the purpose of me using an alias. Here is my bio, blah, blah, blah. So I say, I too am on the West Coast. We could uh, do the show. Not a problem. We can do the recording. Next day at 1.11 p.m., he sends me an email. I regret to inform you that I will not be speaking on your radio show. Everything I know about the Challenger hoax is in my post on my blog, and I have really nothing to add. I wish you and your show all the best. Wow. What do you take from that? Somebody got to him, and, or, I mean, right? Somebody told him to shut it down. Don't, oh gosh. Um, that, that makes it all even the more interesting, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, for sure. For sure. I'm curious to see what our audience says about that. And I'm waiting to read the reactions in regards to that, you know, because this, you know, there is some very, very interesting, interesting associations with this. And all you have to do is Google it. All you have to do is Google it. And when you Google it, you'll be amazed. Read his article. But for him to shut down just like that, just like that, no. it was amazing to me. It was just amazing. You know, and I don't want to sound like we're dodging the topic here, but I think this one has plausibility. I hope not, but it has plausibility, and that's what it comes down to. Right. So it kind of drives me nuts because, again, if Mm -hmm. if these pictures of them now, you know, you've seen the pictures, you know, when they supposedly died and then, um, you know, for 40 or plus years, and you look at them, and, and, I mean, you, you hold the pictures up right next to them, you see this, it's mind-boggling, and then why why can't why isn't somebody going to find 
the the people that are in the images with their names. Um, I believe somebody even researched out their their private a lot of their private information. But I want if anybody out there <laughs> could please go investigate this. I want to know if that's them. Me too. Okay? Me too. I have an interesting conspiracy theory here. Okay. I read a book. As you know, I'm very much into aliens. I'm very much into UFOs. I don't give a care about what the government says. Right? That The government, whether it's the Canadian government, the American government, you know what? I'm a small peon in their big picture, and I already know that. So I'm not out to point fingers like Stan Romanek did or, or Edward Snowden does or, or whoever. That's not what I'm about. Okay, I care more about the people who are having the experiences. Mm -hmm. But I was doing some research before I started the Spaced Out Radio program in regards to UFO cover-ups. And the one thing that I learned, and this is a real interesting piece of information, is that if you notice how many video games are out there now, or Hollywood movies out there now, where the aliens look so lifelike and so real. And how this ties in to what we are talking about tonight is in the theory that I read from someone prominent lives in Russia, was that the U.S. government, along with, in combination with Hollywood and video games experts, have been putting what we would describe as real alien sightings into their video games and movies because they want the public to see them and get used to them as disclosure draws closer. So that way, when we see them for real with our own eyes and our own 3 or 4D, whatever you want to do, okay, mm -hmm. we're not as scared as we normally would be. What is your theory on that? What is your take? Yvonne? Interesting. I find this interesting because let me ask you this in the games. Are they being, are they attacking or are they, are they benevolent or mostly? Both sides? Well, they're mostly violent. Mostly violent. Okay. So I would have to say fear porn. I would have to say another program, another ingenious way of programming the masses because they know most um, most kids or most younger generations are plugged in, and um, it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, they've 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 got a they've got the music industry locked down. They've got movies locked down. Why wouldn't they do video games? Not only that, you now have Oculus coming out, and Oculus for those of you that don't know, it's a it's like a visor you put on your eyes, and um, <laughs> you're in. It, it, well, it's like a holodeck, essentially, um, over your eyes, and you're, you're inside the game. And if you're walking in the game, you're walking in our, on the earth, in the room that you're in. So you got to watch out so you don't fall down the steps. But, but um, they, they are, I, I, I would say it's another source of fear porn, uh, brainwashing, control. And um, I, I don't, I, you know... Um, I don't like it. I don't think it's good. Just just like all the other programming that's going on. I'm not sure about this one because, let's face it, we all know Hollywood exaggerates. <clears throat> we all know that, for instance, Travis Walton, when he had his experience, you know, over the years he has realized that it wasn't a negative experience that he had with extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. And yet the movie Fire in the Sky depicts something totally different. Oh. So I think that the fear porn is in there. The one thing that I will say is that I do not believe that they are portraying what most extraterrestrial contact is like. I still think that there is more of a benevolency to the contact that people are having, yet not a lot of malevolency that video games or Hollywood is making out. But let's face it, 
fear sells. Look what's happening in the U.S. election right now. Fear sells. Okay? Fear makes people do a lot of strange things. And if we keep people fearful of extraterrestrials, that's a whole different ballgame if they really do come down. Whole different ballgame. Can I throw something out there? I just was thinking. If you say you've got, you're playing your video game, and we know that most of the gaming uh, devices now have the cameras, right? They're reading your every move. You can tell the TV or the game what you want it to do. Also with the Oculus on. What if they're scanning the biofeedback of the human body? What if they are trying to pick up the emotional state and or the radio frequency or the resonance, the waves that are coming out of the brain when the player is exposed to these types of situations, fighting scenarios, and aliens? Mm. That could be. That mm-hmm. could be very, very well. It's very interesting. We have a lot that we do not know. We have a ton that we do not know. It's very <coughs> interesting indeed. Hey, we got about literally four minutes left in the broadcast. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to give you the conch right now, Ivan. <gasps> what? Okay. Do you want to keep going? Uh, we could, we could do that. Why not? Why All not? Right. All right. Let's put it to the audience. If you're in the Space Out Radio chat room, you're in Paranormal End of the Night or Paranormal Forum. If you want us to continue for about another half an hour, let me know. Put it on there. Get it out into the public. Put Start it in the shouting. public eye. <laughs> do we continue going? Yes or no? This is where the Jeopardy theme song comes on as we wait for them to catch him up (laughs) okay gloria just made the call gloria in paranormal into the night she just made the call we are literally going to be going another half an hour or so how about that i'm not even tired i'm way too excited like i don't (laughs) i i don't know man like do i do I play another commercial? Do I play the theme song? Do I just chatter? You know, so that way you could all hear my teeth kind of, you know. <laughs> I think you should so, sing. Um, <laughs> one se- <laughs> well, I'm definitely not going to sing, but <laughs> we're going to go over time here. And unlike Bill Cardwell's Toronto Maple Leafs, we're actually going to win this one. And we're going to continue on here on Spaced Out Radio tonight. You know what? I hope you don't mind. I'm going to take a break. And then we'll come back. So I'm going to play another commercial again. I'm going to give you my play-by-play that absolutely pisses me off when I hear other hosts do it. But i got to I got to refill on some water here because I was not prepared for this. But let's... Let's continue it going. You're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. I'm not even playing the closing audio. I'm just playing another commercial. We'll be back for a bonus half hour right after this. Would you like to become one of our space travelers? All you have to do is click on the space travelers icon at spacedoutradio.com. For only $5 a month, you can get access to some great prizes, as well as private monthly shows, newsletters, and a members-only section on our website. Become a space traveler today. Hi there, this is your medium, Joanna, from Spaced Out Weekend, Two Mediums and a Large. I would love it if you would come and join us with host James Tyson every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. Together, we will take your calls and your questions live. Our goal is to provide you with a positive outlook on deep questions that you may have. Questions regarding love, relationships, money, or whatever else is on your mind. Come and check us out at spacedoutradio.com. Every Saturday and Sunday night, as Dave Scott wanders aimlessly in the wilderness. You can come hang out with me, James Tyson, and Spaced Out Weekend. Starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, I'll take you along as we talk with some of the best experts in their fields. Spacedoutradio.com is the place to find us. 
So sit down, relax, put your feet up. Enjoy the topics like the paranormal, supernatural, intuitiveness, and so much more. Hope to see you there. Hi there, this is Elizabeth Anglin, and on the last Monday of every month, I join Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's Cosmic Passport. We delve into everything from extraterrestrial contact to animal communication. It's a lot of fun, and every month it's something different and exciting. I would love it if you would join us. You can hear and learn from my experiences, and I'd like to know about yours as well. Cosmic Passport on SpacedOutRadio.com. Hey everybody, this is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm here to bring you the Webster Phenomena every Saturday night, live at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. If you're looking for aliens and extraterrestrials, well, we've got them. Big and tall, short and small, you're bound to find what you're looking for. So join me on the Webster Phenomena, right here on Spaced Out Radio. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit and expect a miracle. Have you ever wondered about those weird and strange creatures people have reported throughout history? Do you wonder if those stories are real? Me too, and that's why I started Cryptopia.us. Hey, this is Rob Morphy, Crypto Historian. Join me once a month on Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott, where we will get into the odd and bizarre reports from the Dover Demon to Harry Hominids and everything in between. I will break down what people like you and me are seeing at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to advertise on Spaced Out Radio? Getting your message out to Spaced Out Radio's listeners will benefit you. Our listeners are loyal, intelligent, and supportive. And they support those who support the broadcast. For pricing and information, you could go to spacedoutradio.com to find the pricing guide that suits your needs, with many options to choose from. Advertise with Spaced Out Radio today by contacting us at info at spacedoutradio.com. Want to connect with us online? Find us on Facebook, Spaced Out Radio Show, on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, on Instagram, Dave Scott, S-O-R, on YouTube, Spaced Out Radio Show, and our website is spacedoutradio.com. All right, space travelers, here comes the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio. Well, let's try hour number three. While we're at it, let's go to hour number three. I just picked a commercial there just to play it for the heck of it. But that's what we are doing tonight. We're going into bonus time here. Bonus time on Space Out Radio. Why? I'm not tired. I know Groovy Bean, Yvonne Palermo, and she likes it when you roll the R's. She has about 15 R's in her last name. She loves it when you roll the R's. So we're going to continue on here on Space Out Radio tonight. I do want to remind all of our listeners that we do have a bunch of listeners who probably, from the old Blog Talk Radio format, don't understand or don't know that we have moved over. So if you're one of these people who hops around listening station to station, and I know there's a few of you out there, okay, do me a favor. Let them know that we have moved here. So if you see other people in another chat room, if you see people who are regulars to this program, who are out there, who haven't realized that we moved over and wondering where we are, tell them that we have gone to Spreaker. And they can find us by going to Spreaker.com, looking up Space Out Radio, give our page a follow, and that way, as soon as you follow us, what happens is you'll be hit with a message that we are about to broadcast live to you. And that is, I think, a really cool feature. So let them know that we have moved. Because 
we want to make sure, and what I've been telling people for a while here, is that we are moving, and we have now moved. I love this new format. I really do. And we're going to be doing it more and more often here. And I love the fact that we can go overtime if we need. Because there are certain days I didn't really want the show to end, but we were capped out on the former format at two hours. Here we can go up to five. I can guarantee you we're not going up to five tonight. But let people know where we are. Especially if they are fans of this show. I see a lot of regulars in the Space Out Radio chat room. But there's still a lot of people missing. No man or woman should remain missing if they are a fan of this show. So I'm asking for your help from Spaced Out Radio to you. If you see anybody on the other networks who doesn't know where this show is or where we have gone, tell them about it. Remind them that we have moved over. I would greatly appreciate that. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Space Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show. On Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. And our YouTube channel is Spaced Out Radio Show. And our new look website is spacedoutradio.com. We bring in Crazy Ivan, Yvonne Palermo into Space Out Radio Land once again. Thank you for being with me, partner. Hey, hey, thank you for having me. Not a problem. Not a problem whatsoever. Let's get into a little bit of 9 11 <gasps> since we're talking conspiracies tonight. Okay. All right. Out of all the conspiracies surrounding 9 11, which is the one that makes you scratch your head the most? Oh, oh my goodness. I think it would be the. Is it, the, is it nanothermite? Yes, the nanothermite. Nanothermite, molten metal, and building seven. Well, there's a there's too many. Actually, I'm sitting here going, "Gosh." Well, you know what? I have a few. Okay. I have a few. The nanothermite that was found in building seven is very odd to me. Uh -huh. Very odd. And Building 7 coming down, what tripped me out about that, and when I started looking at footage on it, because like mostly everybody who is, you know, around that dreadful, dreadful day, uh -huh. I started looking around, and the one thing that I couldn't get out of my mind was that both CNN and the BBC... 20 to 30 minutes before Building 7 collapsed, uh -huh. we're actually showing live feeds of downtown Manhattan saying that Building 7 collapsed, and yet the building is still standing. Still standing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I understand that 9-11 is a very, very sensitive topic to a lot of people. Almost 2,900 people died that day, mm -hmm. and... It changed the way all of us live, and not for the better, in my opinion. And, you know, one conspiracy I do not believe in that is going around is that the airplanes that hit the Twin Towers were holograms. I do, oh. not, I do not buy that for a second. I think what we saw is real. I want to tell you my 9-11 story. Okay. I was working in a news station in Vancouver, British Columbia. I was scheduled to cover football practice because I was a sports reporter when everything went to hell. And my boss said, you have a choice. You can come into the newsroom and help out, or you can take the day off. And I felt like I needed to be in the newsroom, so I raced out to Vancouver from my house and got into the newsroom and started helping out as much as I could. And then it came down that on the first plane that hit the towers, that there were two members of the scouting staff of the Los Angeles Kings of the National Hockey League, Mark Bavis and Garnet Ace Bailey, who is an NHL Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. So 
I call up a gentleman named Ron DeLorme, who is the director of amateur scouting for the Vancouver Canucks. And I call him up and, hey, Ron, how you doing? He's like, hey, Dave. I was on a first name basis with him. He's like, what's going on? I said, I was wondering, you know, on this real solemn day, if I could get a quick interview with you in regards to what had happened with the two LA Kings scouting staff. Sure, not a, sure, not a problem. And so we did the interview, lasted about seven and a half, eight minutes. And then I say, hey, Ron, I, I'm so thankful that you had the opportunity to talk with me. I appreciate you picking up the phone. You didn't have to do this. And he said some words that will I will never erase out of my mind from that day. He said, Dave, I got to tell you something. He goes, I've known Garnet or Ace. He called him Ace. He goes, I've known Ace 30 plus years. And he goes, I didn't really know Mark Bavis. But he goes, I have to tell you, I didn't know they were on the flight until you asked me. Oh, oh my. And he goes, I am heartbroken. Mm. And he goes, and I I immediately just went silent, right? I went absolutely Mm. silent because I didn't expect that. Sure. But that was that was bad for me. And that's why I believe that the planes actually did hit the towers. Mm-hmm. But build, building seven trips me out. Yeah. The other the other thing that bugs me is we have seen beforehand and afterwards many airplane crashes where there mm-hmm. is debris scattered along the ground when it hits the ground. Yet in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, there was no debris. Flight 93, correct? I believe so. Yeah. That one bugs me. Mm-hmm. That one bugs me a lot. I agree with you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it, it boggles me with Building 7 as well, how they announced it, but then also how it came down. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've seen a, a, a demolition of a building... Right. I mean, it, it did exactly that. Hey, we're and... gonna we're gonna take a call here. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. Caller from the nine one eight area code. How are you? Are you there? Welcome, caller. Hello. Breaker one nine or over. They just called in. <laughs> Not Go sure. Ahead. Not sure what we are doing here. All right. I guess they don't want to chat with us. Oh. No, they hung up. They hung up. (laughs) Okay. All right. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. We thank them for their time, their effort, and their curiosity in this show. We really appreciate that. But let's move on from 9-11. That one's a little too depressing. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I'm actually tired of talking about that. Claudia has, <laughs> Claudia in Paranormal Into the Night has a great, great question. Is it true that we have time travel projects and what do we know? And we know how to time travel. Do you believe we have space stations throughout the universe already? I love this question because, yeah. you know what? I'm going to put my geek hat on here for a second. Uh, let me just grab the tin foil. Do Hold it. On. Hold Do on. it. Hold on. I'm wrapping up right now. All right. I am going to say yes to all of those. Mm-hmm. I do believe that the secret space program is alive and well. I do believe there's been enough people hinting that it exists since the 1960s, 70s. I do believe if you have ever heard, and it's all over YouTube, you can find the video. A gentleman by the name of Ben Rich used to be the president of Lockheed Skunk Works. And on his deathbed, he said a couple of things. Mm -hmm. He said, number one, we have enough technology to put us about 800 years ahead of where we are today. 800 years. Think about that. Mind-blowing. Put the duct tape on. Exactly. And number two, he said, we already have the ability 
to get E.T. home again. Wow. We already have the E.T. the technology to t- get E.T. home again. Think about that for a second. That is deep. That is very, very deep that mm-hmm. someone would actually say that of his position. Absolutely. What is your take on that there, Ivan? Ivan says that I believe every word that he spoke. I believe we are above and beyond and I think that, oh my gosh, I think that the depth and vastness of the super space program is just, just about sums it up by the universe. It's, it's as vast as the dark space in the universe, the super space program. Okay. I absolutely believe this. Then you have, you have Andrew Bashago. Out of Seattle, who is a lawyer now running as an independent for president of the United States, mm-hmm. who, as a child, said he was a chrononaut, meaning that he, in the 1970s, his father worked for a division of the CIA, went to this jump room in New Jersey, went through this portal, and they ended up in New Mexico. He also stated that during those jump, jump rooms, he met a gentleman, or he was eating lunch one day in a room where there was former presidents, Bush and Bush Jr. Oh, wow. And Bush Jr. was a young man. Bill Clinton was in there. Barack Obama, a.k.a. Barry Satoro, was in there. And that he was in there as well. And they were all chrononauts. In fact, he goes on and says, and he's challenged uh, Barack Obama about it, and of course Barack Obama has said nothing about it, that he actually was on a mission to Mars with Barry Satoro at that time. Then you add in what Captain K has said. You add in what other astronauts have said about Mm -hmm. being followed on every space launch that has ever taken part out of Cape Canaveral in Florida. Mm -hmm. I totally believe we have been to other places. In fact, so much is so that a couple weeks ago when we had Barry Strom on, when he was channeling an extraterrestrial spirit named Moo, Moo even said that, yes, we have been elsewhere around the universe Mm -hmm. and not not just taken by extraterrestrials yeah very interesting very interesting indeed so yes i i do believe there is a secret space program claudia and on april 21st i want you to tune in because i'm going to have a gentleman on the show named olav phillips he is Mm -hmm. one of the lead investigators into the Hidden Secret Space Program. It's going to be interesting. I am so um, looking forward to that show. Dave, I got a question for you. Yeah. How do you feel? What do you? What are your thoughts on what the CERN is? When we're talking about time travel. I just thought I'd throw that out. I don't know too much about CERN. Mm-hmm. I get, I get, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I get freaked out when we start hearing CERN and HARP, where where the government is playing God with things. That bugs me, and yeah, it it, sc- it scares me, and I do not really like to deal with it. And you know what? That's the beautiful part of having a show where you're in control is you kind of get to control the topics. And that's one of the topics that I'm just not comfortable with is discussing what CERN is saying or discussing what um, anybody else is saying or or anything along those lines. It bugs me. And, I understand. Yeah, and I really, really am very, very 
concerned about that because there's so much information and disinformation regarding it that it's a little bit scary when you think what they are doing, how they can play with the weather, how they can play, does it tie into chemtrails, so on and so right. forth. It just, I, I don't want to go there on this program. Okay. We have enough doom and gloom out there, <laughs> and there's enough, okay. sh- there's enough show hosts and, and people who every year are saying, this is the year we die. You know what? We don't need that. So um, I'm going to dodge that question. I hope you fair don't enough. don't mind. No, I'm going to dodge enough. that question. Understand. Uh, I'm looking for a question right now. There was one that I saw in the Spaced Out Radio chat room from Tony. The best time and place to view UFOs is on a nighttime flight. Well, it's more a comment. It's funny because my one, my first extraterrestrial experience actually happened in the daytime. I have seen UFOs in the daytime, but most of them do happen at night because obviously they're easier to see. But for me, what was convincing for me that UFOs are real is when you do see or do have interaction in the daytime. Because at night, your eyes can play tricks on you, more so than in the day. At least that's my opinion. And I, I just think that, you know what, if you can have a daytime encounter... To me, that's so much more. Um, that's so much more powerful. Yeah, very yeah. much so much more powerful. What do you think? I I have to agree with you. Um, I I think I think the daytime is I think the reason why it's more powerful. I for reasons if you capture it on tape because. It's harder for those that it's harder to disprove mm-hmm. when it's during the daytime um, because then you have it on tape and or you know uh, mm. captured still images and then you can you have a, a better judgment of discernment at what you're really looking at or all right think. we're gonna try and add this call again hold on okay. Call, caller, are you there this time? Do you have your yes, microphone on? Who is this? This is Roswell Reagan. Hey, Roz, how are you? Roz is a member of ParanormalForum.net. How are you, Roz? I'm doing good. I called him a while ago, but I guess I had my um, speaker on. I was listening to you, and you sounded like uh, the Predator. Like, oh, like nice. Scary. Scary, <laughs> scary stuff. Yeah. Scary stuff. Oh, yeah. So. I was just curious, uh, what are your thoughts on the Mandela effect? And when I was a child reading the Berenstain Bears, into which now they're spelled differently. Oh. And I remember, like, possibly even even John Teeter being tied into it. Hmm. You know what? I don't know if John Teeter is tied into that. The whole John Teeter story is pretty incredible. And that is a great story who ever came up with that because that has been going on for what? Uh, almost 20 years now. Years? Yes. Almost. You know, the John Teeter story, and I'm not trying to, to uh, get rid of the Mandela effect here. I will comment on that momentarily. Actually, you know what? I'm going to let Yvonne... I'll answer about the John Teeter thing, but Yvonne is more the uh, Comic Con geek than I am. Oh my goodness! So I'll get her. you're on the hot seat for the Mandela effect. But you know what? When it comes to John Teeter, and I know there's another show out there saying that we found him. He's going to be on the air. If they bring him on the air and it's truly him, are people really going to believe that it's him? Because. I'm, I'm pretty- I mean, here's here's my my. He could go, say, no, go ahead, go ahead. Here's my theory on it. From what I know in studying it, he went back. So has he all of a sudden come back again? I have no clue, but he could say, "Well, my prediction was wrong because I altered this, which also that, blah 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 blah." I'm like, "Well, you're just it's great, but I would love to hear some concrete proof." But what really gets me is certain people who I already thought were dead 
and I thought, well, okay, maybe it was just a mistake on me, but I remember reading the Berenstain Bears, mm-hmm. or the Berenstain books when right. I was a kid. And when I look at them yes. now... They're Berenstain. Yes. It comes up totally different, and, it's, and I'm like, it's spelled different. I'm like, that's not the way it was spelled when I was a kid. I distinctly remember that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the A and the E in the last syllables. Yeah. Of the it, it's it's right? like it's like they wanted to take the Jewish last name out yeah. of out of the comic. I don't know why. Uh, I, that is baffling because I've asked my friends, and I spelt it how they remember it, and I'm like, that's how I remember. It. But when I Google it or look up something, it's spelled totally different. Right. I agree yeah. with you. I remember that when I was a kid, it was always the Berenstein Bears. Yes, mm-hmm. and because that's that's, and, and they even you know go back into other things too that are different other than the bears. But I just that was the big thing in my childhood. I was like, they even had TV specials, mm-hmm. and I have, yep. I remember it. Oh, for I sure. So that's my time. That's when I kind of thought, okay, if the John Tier thing has some legs on it, if he did change some things, you know, there's going to be a ripple in time because of what we saw in the movie Back to the Future. And that kind of, which goes into the government thing, they're kind of trying to, I don't want to say condition us or expose us, but I remember seeing in the 90s when I first got the Internet, I downloaded Art Bell's website, and he had a picture, a timeline that Walt Disney produced and put out explaining the history of UFOs and aliens up to that point. Mm. And it was around the time they put out that uh, Walt Disney documentary that uh, you can still find on YouTube, uh, you know, about UFOs and things like that. It even had the CEO, Michael Eisner at the time, explaining about UFOs and things like that. And I can't find the picture, but it was a timeline, you know, from the Roswell crash up to that point explaining, you know, we're like, well, we're introducing characters, we're conditioning kids, we're getting kids and children used to the idea of UFOs and aliens to where when it does happen, people won't freak out or be scared. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that. There was a few people who say that they remember it and they've seen it. And, you know, I can't find it anywhere on the Internet. Anytime I put in the Google search... Uh, Art Bell timeline, UFOs, Walt Disney. I I can't find anything, but it was basically just you know a timeline of saying, hey, this is what happened when Roswell crash, and all the way you know to the little aliens introduced time to time, you know, from just movies, TV shows, anything I do with Walt Disney until that point in the nineties, and with. All that, you know, was it talking about possible disclosure? Um, I that really made me go back to that and think. Well, cartoons and kids, you know, they're easily influenced. Uh, children are very naive and very. I take that back. Not naive, but they're very open and receptive to things that we don't see. You know that I'm full blood First Nations, and I, I'm yeah. getting used to your term, and I and I thank love you it because you know not. And not all not all nations were North America, South America, Central America. We're just all the Americas. Mm-hmm. But children see things that adults don't. It's not because we don't see them. We're just not receptive to them. Children see things uh, because they haven't been told that you don't. It's not that you don't believe in it. It's not that you don't accept it. It's just that they see things until until I feel they lose their innocence or they start to live in, I hate to say this term, but the real world where yes. technology and, and things like that. But, I mean, when they're spiritual and when you're a child, you're open and receptive and you see mm-hmm. things that people can't understand or even be explained. Like you're talking about your daughters when you're seeing the fairies. Yes. Because they're open to it. They're they're communicated with it. They accept it and it's mm-hmm. part of their reality. And when you welcome them in or just even accept them, you're you're going to see things that are out of the ordinary. 
and that's that's when I listen to kids all the time. If they say they saw something, I don't doubt it. Um, my little brother kept telling me he kept seeing a man with a hat, a man with a hat, when he was a child. And mm-hmm. uh, the only thing I can equate it to is um, was that the hat man at night or would people see the shadow shadow people? Yes. And, and I hear that, and I hear kids talking about, oh, I've seen this, I've seen that. And when you talk Kid. about fairies, mm-hmm. my people believe in little people. And the little people would treat you how you are, I don't want to say brought up or raised, but if you're in peril or in a time of need, if you're a child lost, they will take you back to where you're familiar or close to home where you realize, okay, I know where I'm at, and you turn around and they're gone. Mm -hmm. But if you were somebody who is just, you know, rambunctious and just causing trouble, the little people will take you and teach you a lesson to where not to disturb nature, um, not to hurt things that don't need to be hurt. And that's what I, I, I tell my friends. If you just get back to nature, just get in a little bit of harmony, just walk outside barefoot, just lay in the grass, just turn off everything electronic, just walk out in the woods, and you'll slowly start to hear things and see things that 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 are there. Mm-hmm. And that's why uh, a lot of hunters, a lot of fishermen, they know they're in tune with nature. And they get it. Mm-hmm. They they accept it. And when they see something, you know, a lot of hunters aren't going to say they saw Bigfoot because it's they don't want to be ridiculed, but because they're out there. And they're like, uh, a lot of hunters I know, I've asked, I'm like, would you shoot a Bigfoot? I was like, nope, never did anything wrong to me. You know, he's out living his life, doing his thing. I was in his territory. He could have done something to me. And so it's like the tables are turn, but I would never hurt a Bigfoot. The only thing I would do is just leave an offering for it and let it be. And, uh, you know, I hate the term scientific where people say, well, I'm not to prove this and this is because it's scientific. If you believe it, it will show itself to you. If you don't, if you're not a believer, you will never see it. You're going to be like a dog chasing its tail. For sure. Roz, I want to say thank you for calling in tonight. Always appreciate you tuning in and spreading the word and everything. Really do. Hey, thank you, and we appreciate you uh, being on Spreaker. Uh, it, it is the audio is a lot better, and uh, believe thank me, you. you will gain a larger audience, and we appreciate that, sir. I really do, and I really appreciate the fact that you're starting to warm up to me saying First Nations because that's what we call First Nations people up here, We, as long as I could remember. So I hope you get used to that as well, bud. Thank you, sir. You have a good night. Thank you, Take Roz. care. Take care. All right, we got that caller. Roz is part of the ParanormalForum.net group. That follows us as well on a nightly basis. They're paranormalforum.net if you want to sign up with them. I do have a question from Claudia. Do you believe a lot of movies are made with inside information a lot of the time to prepare the public for what may be happening in the future? Also, does the government know if we put a lot of thought to a drama movie or sci-fi movie, we have an ability to make it happen as well? What's your take on that there, Thunderbean? <laughs> Thunderbean. Oh, my. Uh, first and foremost, yes, I believe a lot of movies are made with inside information. I think there's a lot of drip, drip, drip in the disclosure constantly. Again, I also feel there's a lot of fear porn in it. But, um, you know, if you go back and look at some of the the classic movies, like, um, you know, at, what is it, Abbott and Costello Go to the Moon, um, the, those kind of genres and, and how, um, how it, you know, it seems like, tw- you know, 20 years or so after those movies were made, things k- became apparent. Um, but I think, um, I think if you look at the amount of alien movies actually that have, have come out and or are coming out this year, um, you know, you've got July 4th Independence Day, the second one coming out. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I think that there is a ton of information that is pre-programmed. Um, 
again, it's, um, I think it's quite apparent. Yes. That, that's how I feel about it. I, I, I think it's, I think it's gotten to the point where it's, I mean, you know, have you ever sat in the movie, you're watching it and you're just like, my gosh, you know, why isn't that real? I, I, I think it really is. And they're just back to the future was like that. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Right. Joe has a question in paranormal into the night. What the hell is in the woods? It's always looking at me. Oh. Now I'm, I'm going to tell a story last week. As, as many of you know, I, I, at times, I can be a little intuitive. So I told Joe in two di- on two different nights to point his camera out in a direction, different directions. The first night, there was something standing behind the tree, which we all saw because Joe posted the po- photos on Paranormal Into the Night. The second night, for me, was even more interesting because it looked like there was two sets of raccoon eyes down below, and he has this big, giant boulder in his garden with this really cool bending tree. And But if you look above the boulder and you zoom in on the photo, there's actually the head of an alien gray staring back at the camera. Oh. Joe, I'm going to tell you right now, man, you got aliens. Some people have ants. Some people have cockroaches. Some people have raccoons or squirrels. But you got them aliens, man. They're back there. Mm -hmm. And as I say that, the front of my head starts to hurt. So usually that's a little bit of a sign that, yes, I think I'm right. But don't worry, they're not bad. They're just kind of hanging out. I don't think they're taking you, Joe. That's not the feeling I get. So, that's my intuitive talk for today. I need a theme song for that. Dave's intuitive talk of the day. (laughs) Well, my friend, you know what? We've been going pretty long here. I've had a great time. Yes, yes. I'm going to talk to you, Miss Ivan Palermo. (laughs) <laughs> in about three minutes. But for okay. the rest of you guys, it's 12.36 a.m. I went six minutes over that I thought I would. Tomorrow night on the show, I'm going to fire up the theme song here. Hold on. Let, let's rock and roll as we step out with a little bumblefoot. Hey, 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 hey. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Your microphone is still on, by the way. All right, that's the legendary guitar god, Ron Bumblefoot Thal. We are the only ones who have actual theme music that an artist has said, yes, you can use it. How cool is that? Tomorrow night on the show, Victor Cundiff is going to join us. We're going to be talking Dogman. All about Dogman for a couple of hours tomorrow night. We'll try and fit in your questions as we always do. Maybe a couple phone calls. We'll see if Vic wants to go that direction. I'm looking forward to that show. I love the Dogman. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group as well as Podcast Central. On Instagram, you can follow me at Dave Scott, S-O-R. Our website is spaceoutradio.com as well. We're going to be adding to that in the next few weeks. And our YouTube channel is Space Out Radio Show. I want to say thank you to Yvonne Palermo. She's got 15 R's in her last name. And the Groovy Bean, you're going to be hearing a lot more of her in the coming weeks here on Space Out Radio. I will tell you all about that Friday night at the SOR Roundtable. Absolute pleasure to be with you tonight we will be back in exactly 21 hours and 22 minutes normally i say 22 hours but we're at 21 hours and 22 minutes now because we've kind of run a little bit late tonight but that's okay we really don't mind it's fun having a blast and why not test this speaker studio out we gotta learn this man we gotta learn this get it going get smooth on it so that way we're sounding professional so on that note i will talk to you all tomorrow night 
We're going to rock out to Bumblefoot as we close out the show because that's what we like to do. We've got about 50 seconds left in that. Thank you for staying with me all night tonight. Thank you to Dino and Roz who called in tonight. Your questions, once again, from the Space Out Radio chat room were fantastic, along with Paranormal Into the Night, always active with you guys. Thank you so much. And Paranormal Forum, thank you for tuning in. Remember, my final words of the night. We have listeners out there who do not know we've switched over. If you're going to any other radio program that's online, do me a favor. Let them know where we are. Cog, this means you, because I know you're all over the radio shows. You know where everybody is. I'm out of here. Thank you for tuning in. I'll talk to you tomorrow night in exactly 21 hours and 20 minutes. Good night.